Well, growth stocks don't grow. Confused? Well, according to Canon Asset Managers, stocks are called growth stocks because they're expected to grow earnings faster than the overall market continually disappoint. Joining me to explain the confusion is Jeff Blunt. He's the CEO of Canon Asset Managers. Jeff, thanks for coming in. Why is the market getting it so wrong? Why should we put a premium on companies where we expect earnings to grow and they do disappoint in the long run? I don't think that the market's getting it wrong. It's part of, I think, human psychology, investor psychology, that people like to chase story stocks. Uh, stories or companies that they believe are going to deliver well above expectations into the future. And, uh, you know, so you're kind of catching a, catching a rainbow here. Hopefully the company, you're going to pay a lot for it, but it is going to deliver into the future. And the evidence is in the contrary. Why, why is it in the contrary? Um, well, and, we, and, and, okay, yeah. Perhaps I should ask how long into the future are we looking also? <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, I mean, if you, conventional wisdom says the reason why you pay, for example, a, a high price for a stock, and let's take price earnings as the metric that you're going to measure. The reason why you'd pay a high PE for the stock is that you acknowledge that it's expensive uh, relative to other stocks in the market that, that attract a lower PE, but you'll pay up for that high PE because it will deliver those earnings into the future or high earnings into the future. Um, and when you have high earnings growth, your PE comes down. Uh, the evidence that, that we have is that, uh, and this is a long study done over 35 years, 10,000 stocks uh, around the globe, with including survivorship bias, would indicate that in fact they don't deliver on their growth expectations. Uh, in contrary, you know, contrary to sort of popular wisdom, it's the lower PE stocks, the unpopular, unfavorable stocks. Typically, they've had a recent poor earnings experience, and they do deliver on earnings growth. Uh, so, uh, and and prices, you know, ultimately to, 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 driven by earnings. Um, so we contend that investors that are chasing growth expectations and paying up for them are more often disappointed. Because you are a value investor though, aren't well, you? Well obviously, yeah. <laughs> we, we, what I, I sort of wear my value hat here and uh, we are biased towards value. But generally, you know, the value premium is acknowledged as, as it does exist. Value stocks or low PE stocks, if that's your metric for measurement, over time do deliver better returns. The conventional wisdom says the reason why you earn those returns is because you're taking on higher risk. Um, and that's contrary. And you're coming off a low base. And you're coming off a low base. So you're taking on higher risk and you're coming off a low base. Uh, and therefore, you warrant those returns. Uh, we, the, that is also contrary to, the, the, you know, to, to, to evidence that says earnings drive shares ultimately. And so therefore, we think that it's an earnings phenomenon. The value phenomenon is driven by earnings growth. Uh, in, into the future, not by um, not by a risk premium. Well, let's just chat about a few of the examples that you have given because you mm. did write a little piece. You mm. include um, some of the the current favourite growth stocks mm. as Nasperos, Capitec, and Aspen. Mm. Now, th those companies those are companies that have been delivering quite good growth. Of exactly. course, earnings growth. Mm. Of course, they are sitting on high PE mm. multiples at the moment. Capitec earnings coming through recently, very very strong. Mm. Aspen's also been doing pretty well. So, are you mm. saying? Going forward, they're on this high base. They're not going to be able to sustain the momentum that they have built, and they are going to disappoint. Look, I mean, I'm not talking. Uh, I mean, we mentioned those stocks specifically because the market has a has a high appetite for them. Uh, our time frame, as you asked earlier on, is five years or so. So we're looking at a five-year period. And what the market is confusing has great businesses with great investments. These are good companies. Uh, they've got great business models, great uh, uh, management, or they're in great products and services. Um, and they and so therefore, the market confuses that with what they're going to pay for them. Um, they will f if you think about it now, they've recently had strong earnings experiences. So to warrant the average across those three stocks is a P of about 22, 23. It means that they have to continue for the next few years growing earnings very, very strongly uh, to maintain or to reduce that P to make it an attractive investment. And we think evidence, into the evidence of the past is that that's hard to maintain. It's far easier when, you, when you're an unloved stock uh, and, and no one likes you no one, and you've recently had poor earnings experience for you to uh, start exhibiting earnings recovery. Uh, over five year periods, on average, we've found that uh, low PE stocks grow the earnings at about 10% ahead of the market over extended five year periods. And very high PE stocks, your, your top fifth of the market, your top bucket of PE stocks, typically grows earnings at about 7%, 6% less in the market. And ultimately, that's demonstrated in the share prices. Uh, in the meantime, you will make money on these shares, provided you've got itchy trigger fingers, you know, as, as if those shares keep uh, moving and there's positive momentum. But you've got to be willing to exit. As soon as the market sniffs that earnings are going to disappoint, you know, and you often hear that you know, the you know, company comes out and says, oh, we grew our earnings at 50%, not 60%. And the share price falls 25%. Uh, 
that's the type of thing when the market doesn't do okay, so doesn't much is deliver. priced into those stocks exactly. and, and you go you go back historically you talk about and um, the IT firms back in the late 1990s mm. and we know what happened mm. to those construction groups a few years ago resources mm. a couple of years ago retailers last year mm. of course retailers also sitting on pretty high PE mm. so you can't dispute that we have some pretty good retailers out there mm. but you're just saying we're paying too much for them at the moment yeah the, the example of, of last year was cash retailers you know you sort of found that in you know last year what were the th major themes in the year were well, gold shares uh, cash retailers and, and pharmaceutical medical companies, uh, healthcare, because in a recession when there's a, a, a fall in earnings uh, or earnings are under threat, people have got to eat, they're going to use healthcare. And you know, there was the bet on gold. Uh, and those shares were all very expensive. Now, those disappointed, those sectors have disappointed in the last year and a half. And it's not so much that they're initially bad companies, but it's just that the expectations are too high of these, they're priced too high. Remember, growth's not just about growth companies, it can be, in defense, it can be defensive companies when the market is in, in, in a bear market. So what are some of the unloved, um, undervalued shares that we should be looking at? Is there something in the market at the moment that we're, we're looking past? Yeah, well, we, we like, um, uh, and again, being a typical contrarian value manager, we like Grinrod, uh, we like Group 5, we like Avenge. We've been picking up a lot of construction stocks in the last few months. Now, we're not forecasting when they're going to recover earnings. We know they're in trouble at the moment. But if you take Group 5 as an example, I mean, the market in, in the early 2000s priced Group 5 on a 5 PE. Uh, we owned it at that stage. We sold it on when it hit a P of about 25. The market was enamored with it. And the market's just sold the share back to us at a P of 6. Um, you know, that's, it's the same business. It's just that the Mr. Market who you're trading with on the other side is perceiving the valuation differently. And we don't know. We, we know they're in for a tough time. We're not, ex, you know, we're not expecting an earnings recovery in the next year or two. But these are good, solid companies. And you said you are looking five years hence. Yeah, anyway. I mean, our, our time frame is five years. The analysis is five years. Over one year, I think that uh, your momentum stocks, which are typically growth stocks, that uh, your story stocks that the market's enamored with, probably outperform. Uh, so what sort of PEs would you be looking at a, a, at a, a value stock on? What, what would be attractive for you to take that risk mm. because it might not go the way you want Absolutely. it to go over five years. So you are paying no. for risk as well. Uh, uh, we normally like to get about a one third discount to the market. So if the market at the moment is on a PE of about 18, 17, uh, you want to pick up. We, we like that, 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 if you want to call it that, that measure of safety, of about a third, so a PE of 12. Look at stocks around a P of 12 less or in that vicinity or more. And still obviously be careful about it. Yeah, absolutely. Not no, every no. stock in a P of 12. A lot of cheap stocks are cheap because they deserve to be cheap. Yeah. They are of poor quality or they have faced some kind of economic or management or industry problem. Um, and so the trick is actually identifying the cheap stocks that have potential for recovery. The market gets it right a lot as well. Uh, some cheap shares, uh, low-priced shares, deserve to be cheap. Yeah. 